The word of God is alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow. And it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, or accurately handling the word of truth. Dear brethren, before we could continue today's discourse, it is very much essential for us to note that each and every breath that we take, if it is not been for the praise of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, each and every word and act we do, if it is not to the glory of Lord God Almighty, then we need to come back and cross-check and look what is the failure for that. There couldn't be any other reason than to tell to you that the failure is purely we have not been controlled of the spirit by using rebound. We have not been taken care by the ministry of our own privacy of our priesthood to confess our sins directly to Lord God the Father and to know the reality of the word that we have been called to be an adult son who yours. And we have been called to take the responsibility laid down upon our shoulders only when we know the true meaning of Proverbs 22.6, which tells to us, train up the child. But in the, but in the Hebrew, it says, Hanok Lanar. Hanok means to dedicate so that the child should know the responsibility. Even as such, it is not a child, but it is Nar, Narims. When Elisha brought curse upon those children, it records the Bible through those beers which have come to consume them. They were not of a small age. They were aged somewhere near from the age of 8 till to the age of 40. The men who have failed to learn the responsibility upon those men, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ allowed to get that curse of Elisha to be performed. It is not exactly about 8. It may be somewhere near 35 to 40. It records one of the commentators and the one commentator is John Gill. He tells these are of the age who have known the reality, how to understand the word of the Lord, who have been grown up to look upon the responsibility laid down upon the shoulders. And he said very clearly, these are the people who have neglected to be taken the training, Hanok. And in the Egyptian word, it could be used a word for given to the service of God, are dedicated to the divine service. And this were the people which our Bible tells in Proverbs 22.6 to train them up, to dedicate them to the responsibility which has been laid on upon their shoulders. Even as such, we the church age believers, we are not with the Old Testament times of endowment ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. But we, the believers, are in the New Testament time with the mental ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. And this mental ministry being called for us as Alekane Ketesis, new spiritual species in Christ, which makes us to be constantly controlled of the Spirit when we can use rebound 1 John 1 9. 1 John 1 9 is not a license to sin, but rather 1 John 1 9 is the only way for you to cross check whether you are still in the carnality or your dungeon out of fellowship from the bottom circle of true fellowship with Christ and get back into that bottom circle, your own portfolio of invisible assets could be bought into force there. Your own divine dynosphere, where the power of Lord God, the Holy Spirit will work very greatly so that now you can learn doctrine. Now you can know the image of Christ. Now you can apply you are the body of Christ and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is our head and we been exemplified in the marriage analogy between the parents in First Corinthians 11.3, it states that for our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, head is God the Father, and for a man, head is his 
our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and for a woman, the head is her own husband. That meant to say the thinking pattern have to be changed. Now we, through the letter of Ephesians, we learn that it is a body of Christ, and we learn through the letter of Colossians that it is the head, the thinking. Exactly, now we, the church, should have a thinking, and thinking is now which has to be based upon the thinking of Christ. When he is the head and we are his body, it has to work as per the thinking of Christ. And what is the true thinking? of Christ. That is what you and I have to come. Many of the people have failed to learn this thinking. Many of the people have been negative evolution to grow up in the knowledge of Bible doctrine. Rather than growing up in the knowledge of Bible doctrine, they have been negative enough and they have been out of fellowship constantly throughout their life and the result is exactly the great lessons what we can learn from the ensamples of the Old Testament Israelites. But now the profound question what we can ask is, what is our profit and where is our profit to prove that to tell that Lord they failed but we at least are not going to fail that's the true reason that we need to tell but what is happening you know we the church age believers leading into apostasies and heresies have left out the reality of the importance of Bible doctrine to be inculcated in the pulpits and following the gimmicks and the tricks of the cheap communicational methods which is not at all necessary because even an unbeliever who has been teaching for them some classes morally he is superior than the believer a Christian believer is not called to show for the the moral excellence but a Christian believer has been called to show for the virtue the virtue derived from Bible doctrine the virtue that you can gain when you have been there in the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit and when you have been doctrinal oriented when you have been there to build up your complex upon humility or teachability so that you can now know and learn the personal love towards God and you can show for that impersonal love towards all mankind and you can share the happiness of Christ because you have learnt it and this this is what you can get back to the reality of a day-by-day -day process of intaking Bible doctrine, dear brethren. Greater our failure to understand the simple truths. Do you know what is happening today in our churches? It is nothing but harasses upon harasses. And we are being able to look upon the pulpits, upon each and every nick and corner, that we don't have the reality of the teaching in those pulpits. But rather, the pulpits have been given over to the care of those stupefied thoughts, which are no thoughts at all. The Pulpits have been given over to the negligence of Bible doctrine. We don't have today in our churches the things that are pertaining to Bible doctrine, but rather we are having the legalism, the fundamentalist, and the defunct spiritual gifts of Bible doctrine into force, like the miracles, healings, or tongues, but not the true word of the Lord which they could emphasize. The reason only behind this is, number one, you are not having positive evolution to learn Bible doctrine. Number two, the reason is is that Satan never wants you to learn the word of the Lord. It will give to you anything and everything, but it will never give to you the word of the Lord. Because you know why in this church age, sandwiched between the two advanced, a believer has been given number one priority as positionally superior at the moment of salvation itself than to the chief fallen angel known as Satan. Your position in Christ has been exalted. Your positional truth has been superior, in fact, even greater than the chief fallen angel known as Satan and experientially the only realm is that you need to grow up to that experiential sanctification and to grow up in that experiential sanctification dear brethren it demands a day-by-day -day intake of Bible doctrine and that's what Satan knows if you grow up experientially as well your rewards in heaven will be greater and you have many more things to show forth in the heaven and Satan doesn't want you to show forth anything in the heaven. That's why it is telling for you to just leave it off Bible doctrine and follow the prosperity which I'm going to give you. The prosperity of fakery of thinking. The prosperity which even the Israelites thought that they could get when they are living behind the word of the Lord. And ultimately what it was, it was sheer wrath. It was a sheer rot of a lie, that prosperity without true happiness. But the one who have to be very happy and stable enough should have a foundation thoroughly firmed upon a solid rock. And that solid rock is nothing but the word of the Lord. A believer after salvation, what the profound question could be to learn Bible doctrine will be the answer. If a believer has to learn Bible doctrine, then what it is necessary for us to learn Bible doctrine, your evolution is necessary. Your positive evolution to 
to learn the word of the Lord, to grow up in Bible doctrine is necessary. Your evolution in understanding the word of the truth is necessary. And above all, what it has been required, it has been required for you to note that each and every day, a day-by-day -day renovation of your thinking have to take place. A day-by-day -day growth in the realm of Bible doctrine have to be required. And if the greater of our negligence to grow up in the day-by-day -day process, never you will come to know that you are a citizenship in heaven. Never you will come to know you have a polity of privileges. Never you will come to know you are a real identity in Christ that at the moment of salvation itself 39 assets have been given and 39 are irrevocable and one is revocable that is filling of the Holy Spirit. What happens whenever you sin you lose your temporary fellowship but the permanency of indwelling is constantly present in you and that is the baptism of Lord God the Holy Spirit and many morons do not even know it is a day by day process minimum one day you need to give up your tithe to the Lord that is two hours or four minutes and you have to go either through learning the word of the Lord or really applying the word of the Lord or really acquiring the word of the Lord if you're not acquiring the word of the Lord and are apply, not applying the learning that meant to say you do not know about our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and you will never come to know how to love that great unique Lord who died for you and for me as a substitute of spiritual death upon the cross many of the people will say head knowledge and heart knowledge head knowledge is thinking heart knowledge is emotion maybe that is a true for some extension but really dear brethren your heart which pumps the blood of pure one until and unless your heart pumps the knowledge of Bible doctrine which have to be thorough exegesis alone you cannot have your proper frame of reference you cannot have your memory center stored with the vocabulary categorization of the words and you cannot have the reality which is so much essential for us to look in a day-by-day -day process so that you can form the plot line of your soul the forward line of troops to your soul so that it can defend against any prosperity or adversity the stress line which you can get you need to take it you need to control it and you need to form it and that is what your heart does and your heart have to really circulate Bible doctrine but the real difference is we are not able to believe the word of the Lord as it is that's why it becomes a failure in the heart knowledge to be converted the head knowledge may be the, epino the gnosis knowledge the heart knowledge will look for epinosis knowledge and this both will go hand in hand it is not that the head knowledge and the heart knowledge because many of the people will think leave that nonsense to the theologians whenever we are preaching because this word of the Lord what we are communicating to you it is not just a nonsense it is your life if you are not able to understand this reality why you have been kept alive if you are not able to understand the sophisticated spiritual life if you are not able to understand the three stages of this unique spiritual life of your adult one followed by spiritual self-esteem or spiritual autonomy and then by spiritual maturity so that you need to come back to the maximum glorification of Lord in a day-by-day -day process and that demands the intake of Bible doctrine more than the physical breath you take and the physical food you consume then it is a really a tough time for you to understand dear brethren why have you been kept alive and why you will be here over here to understand the change of the conflict really you believe it or not positionally dear brethren you are superior than to the chief fallen angel known as Satan experientially you need to grow up that's what Apostle Paul in the year of AD 64 prior to his death for four years he has written us these things the prison epistles the epistles of Philippians Ephesians and Colossians the great importance about the mystery doctrine of the church age the great importance what are the blessings for for a believer in heavenlies and the great blessings what he writes for us the privileges what we are going to enjoy the polity of privileges the reality of the word what exactly is the duty of a pastor teacher he doesn't mention there once again the principles pertaining to the temporary spiritual gifts because he knew those spiritual gifts will be used till age 70 after that the way it will be destroyed and he said long back in first Corinthians 12 the conversation ending at first Corinthians 14 that this temporary gifts will be seized off but there are morons in the church ages today who want to really deceive the people they want to be happy with the trends pertaining to their gospel work they want to add all the stupidified thoughts if this gift of tongues is still available today then why it is a pain upon the shoulders of the missionaries to learn their languages and to translate Bible into their languages they would have really done it by the gift of tongues isn't it
then at least you should realize why were the gift of tongues seized long back before we can have Bible in our own hands with our own vernacular languages. That is what many of the people should understand. The problem is that they don't have enough thinking, thinking, thinking. They are been looking along with the heart knowledge, which is not as we mentioned the mechanics, the heart knowledge of emotion. In emotion, they want to gibberishly jump around, dance around, and tell around X, Y, Z trends. But never they will come around to look what is the exact reality of Bible doctrine. What is the exact reality of the word of the Lord? And without the word of the Lord, why it is not possible for us to please that great and unique Lord? Dear brethren, you may be thinking the tapes that have been put in the video tube, particularly answering back Zakir Nayak and telling him is not a big deal for us. It even take us less it even take us a minute, less than a minute we can tell what is his fate. But dear brethren, the Christians who have been perishing, my own people, my royal family of God, who have been called as brethren, though unitedly though united with one Holy Spirit and separated with all other culture, nations and race and languages, we are being united by one, that is the mantle ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. So it is our pain and burden to make this church know the leaders to understand particularly the importance of Bible doctrine, the real inculcation of the word of the Lord through proper exegesis. The way these people they want to emphasize upon the things pertaining to their life, we don't care for it, we don't look for it and we don't understand for it. What do we have? We have only one thing to be understood and that one thing is the knowledge of Bible doctrine. When our Lord said the fifth phrase, I am thirsty, exemplification of the fifth phrase as our Lord led us, it is very essential for us to note the importance of the doctrine of dispensations. And the doctrine of dispensations, it is very much essential for us to note the polytheism of privileges given to us. And these polytheism of privileges are so much essential, dear brethren, for you to know that what are you in Christ, who are you in Christ, and where are you in Christ. Dear brethren, if you are not able to understand the simple words that we are able to communicate for you under the mental ministry of life, get the Holy Spirit, then it will be really a tough time for you to know because you have been called to the praise of His glory in His grace. And if you are not able to apply that simple words to your life, then you have gone, you have gone long way into the negative realm of true negligence of Bible doctrine. Dear brethren, greater your negligence in understanding the word of the Lord, greater will be your negligence to look and to realize what it is that we have in Christ. Therefore, it is your own spiritual your life. It is on your life decided for you, given by eternity past in the mental ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. And this own spiritual life, it is left for you either the way you can live it. You can live it to the praise of His glory or you can live it in negatively. After salvation, the simplified question will be asked for you, what is it? And you may tell X, Y, Z reasons. But some of the more on, more on Roman Catholics people will come and tell, who have not been exposed to Bible doctrine, you have not had been saved. You are not being called a saint. You are still not at all being saved because of your works that are going to do. Once by faith alone in Christ alone, you believe in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, you are being saved forever. But the problem is you will lose your rewards but not your salvation. First Corinthians 3, 10 through 16 exemplifies to the point and at the judgment seat of Christ you may plead ignorance straight to the point, Lord I do not know but that's what 3.16 tells to us, know ye not that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit, and that is what you have to use, your rebound. Every believer is a priesthood. He has a work and a responsibility laid down on his shoulders to have a clear check of account with Lord God the Holy Spirit and with Lord God the Father and Lord God the Son to learn Bible doctrine, desire for the truth, number one, and love for God, number two. If you don't have desire for the truth, then number two, love for God will not come into play, and greater your negligence to know this things that desiring for the truth and love for God and furthermore followed by your incredible stability and your strength of character and further taken into account for you to understand your perseverance your motivation and momentum so that now you can share the happiness of Christ is what absolutely extra blessings for time it is and extra blessings for eternity will be cross-checked upon these terms whether you had desire for the truth or not and love for God if you really have a love for God God, then absolute status quo for you would be desiring for the truth. A positive believer will be a happy, stable one 
provided he has a constant intake of Bible doctrine. And if he neglects to know the truth, he will definitely perish. Our the words which have been standardized in if John 8:32, many of the politicians also use this quote, and many of the people who have the universities so that they can think the academic knowledge followed by other things pertaining to the academic realm, either psychology or philosophy or any other thing, they may quote this quote of John 8.32. You shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. But dear brethren, whenever even I display in my YouTube videos, it is John 8.32, the only reference I write because it is really for you to know our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ meant in his mind when he told to learn doctrine and the doctrine shall set you free. A daily intake of the word of the Lord in a day-by-day -day process of inculcation. When you grow up in the daily intake of Bible doctrine, a day-by-day -day process, that is the only doctrine that shall set you free. And without that, there is no freedom for you. You may think X, Y, Z, that I have learned, I have become a financial freedom. I have this freedom. I have that freedom. No, there cannot be any freedom for you to be enjoyed until and unless you take the spiritual freedom. This spiritual freedom will be provided for you when you use rebound and get back into fellowship. And get back into fellowship so that let God, the Holy Spirit can control your soul and now in that soul it flows the living water the streams being our training manner in this life the living water is nothing but our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and that Lord and Savior Jesus Christ has been manifested now from the word becoming the flesh and from the flesh once again becoming the written word and we are emphasizing upon that written word which is nothing but for us very graciously granted the New Testament Testament mystery doctrine, the mystery doctrine of the church age, the sophisticated spiritual life, so that every believer can come back to become an invisible hero, an invisible hero, and he can become a winner believer and yield to the maximum glorification of Christ. Many are the people who come to tell XYZ trends, but we don't care for them. We are not even here to waste our time looking upon the movements of the Pentecostal crowds because they want to still look upon miracles, they want to still look upon blessings, they want to still look upon healings. They want to still stress upon new tongues. This is what absolutely a sure out of blasphemy and I would hardly even spend one second of my life looking upon that doctrine and learning upon that doctrine or to think upon that doctrine because we know that is blasphemy straight from the mind of Satan to deceive the people to learn Bible doctrine. Therefore, dear brethren, the only principal reality that you and I have to know, you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. The truth is nothing but the thinking of Christ the mind of Christ and the knowledge of Bible doctrine. Greater our negligence to know the simple truth. I don't deny the sovereignty of Lord working out miracles or healings. If Lord wants to do those miracles or healings to an unbeliever, not to a believer, in fact, even in the life of a believer as well, there they can think and summarize it to a miracle. It could be when they are walking according to his word. Lord will not bless you if you are against his word or walking contrary to his word in your unrighteousness of your character. You may be happy feeling your guilt consciousness to be clear telling that Lord has blessed me but you are not really blessed until and unless you look upon with the mirror of the word of the Lord and cross check where you are and if you are not then you need to come back once again and look upon the foundation what went wrong and why it went wrong and what is the reason behind that that you are not capable of understanding what it is exactly that is going wrong in your life many of the psychological hopes will come around what we have been noticing the area of the old sin nature which has four areas the area of weakness is your personal sin the area of strength to cover that personal sin the area of Christian moral degeneracy and here we get Colossians 2 16 through 21 everything you want to pay back your guilt consciousness with the trends following to that Christian moral degeneracy which is self-righteousness and the fourth one which is out that is nothing but Christian immoral degeneracy which is self-indulgence is really a great danger for us to note and that is what we get mark 7 21 to 23 or 23 to 25 the following that the heart of the man being constantly evil but we have a great lesson to be learned in jeremiah 17 8 followed by jeremiah 17 9 17 8 tells the one who has been founded by the rivers of living water his leaf will be always green though there is no rain he will not fear though there is no 
anything to be supported since his word, since his life has been by the rivers of living water, he gets constantly the fruit in its due season. That is what a real man will be blessed when he's been putting positive knowledge enough to learn the word of the Lord. And if he is failing enough to learn the word of the Lord, he will be like Jeremiah 79. The heart is deceitful above all things. Who can know it? Only our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ can know your heart. People may look and act hypocritically that they love Lord, that they want to love the Lord by raising their hands, getting down upon the knees, and jumping around, and dancing around, and telling that, Lord, I am speaking in new tongues. See how much I love you. The greater they speak in tongues after AD 70, I meant to say 0070 in the first century, they are really blaspheming, my Lord. The gift of tongues were being used to fulfill the prophecy of Isaiah, of Isaiah chapter 28. And they never want to learn that principle of Isaiah chapter 28. Neither they want to look and understand what it is the principle of Isaiah chapter 28 to fulfill and to use the gift of tongues as a, as a gift of evangelism to evangelize the Jews in their own vernacular languages to make them to understand the importance of Bible doctrine and to believe in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ as then and then existed. If they would have really been in the word of the Lord, they would have really believed upon the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Since they have neglected and rejected the word of the Lord, they have gone through long back, which is not at all necessary for them to look. And that's why the gift of tongues were being used as a warning. And once they have been corrected, they have been thrown out. That's what the word of the Lord tells for us. They were no longer necessary. But this man, they want to say, Lord, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. You can see me, you can look upon me, and you can be happy. No. Lord isn't happy with any one of you all until and unless you take number one decision in the positive realm to rebound and get back to take the learning of Bible doctrine as never before. That's what John 8.32 has been emphasized. You shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. You shall know the doctrine and the doctrine shall set you free. 2 Peter 3.18, the dying declaration of Peter tells to us to grow up in grace and in the knowledge of Bible doctrine. 2 Corinthians 4.16, day by day renovation of your thinking. Romans 12.1 and 2, renovate your standards of thinking. Do not be conformed to this world, but rather get conformed to the image of Christ. And how is it possible in your emotion? No. Some morons will tell, Lord took me to the heaven and there in a room, Holy Spirit taught to me the scriptures and I'm coming now and I'm teaching to you. Learn from this. No way. The Protestant father who has been given for us, Martin Luther, he said, we don't require anything apart from the word of the Lord for us. That it is not only going to supply the things pertaining to this world, the things even pertaining to heaven, everything will be supplied. Because it has been given in the completed canon of scripture in our hands. But this man, they don't want to look upon doctrine. They want to look upon these hallucinations of visions and dreams. And they say that Jesus is speaking to me. Holy Spirit is speaking to me. And they deceive the innocent believers. And they're happy deceiving them. Because their conscience is not clear. Neither they are worried to know what is the thing that the Bible teaches. And what are we doing apart from the Bible teaching. Neither they know that the gift of the prophets and apostles have been seized long back. They have done their work and they no longer lead it. And now we have the permanence of the spiritual gift. It will be a pastor-teacher to communicate the doctrine. It is not just pastors and teachers. It is pastor-teacher, I and together. Both go in duty of one. It is a grand really sharp rule. Many of the people don't understand of the Greek. Even the copulative conjunction, chi. It is not a cumulative conjunction used. And that great copulative conjunction, chi, which has been used, is of a very great importance for us to note. And many people can understand what is copulation better to be explained in self-explanatory words. That's the duty of a pastor followed by teacher. The Greek calls a teaching pastor. And we have the gift of an evangelism as well. These are the two permanent gifts into force. To build up the church. To get new converts to the church. One is a pediatrician, the other one is a gynec doctor. No apostles, no prophets. 
prophets in the Old Testament time. The New Testament apostles have done their work. And Second Peter 3, 2 tells for us to build up upon the doctrine which they have given for you. And since Apostle Paul knew that in the end time it will be perilous one, in the dying declaration of him as well, in Second Timothy 4, 1 and 2, he says, Guard the doctrine that has been given in your hand that has been faithfully entrusted in your hands, you guard it properly. And why these people fail to understand the simple truth? Because they don't love doctrine, dear brother, and that's why. Neither they will come to have the fear of the Lord. If they would really have the fear of Jehovah, do you know what they would do? They would realize that they're dealing with the things pertaining to God, not with the things pertaining to this earth. The things pertaining to God is so much great and so much essential, you believe it or not. But tomorrow, we need to answer for each and every word that we spoke. Does not Jeremiah 8, 6 tells for us to learn? I have heard their assemblies and there is none who can speak straight, who can speak right words. If that is your fate tomorrow at the judgment seat of Christ, what you will do, what you will count on your ministry, and you want to know how you will tell what is right and what is wrong. Go back and look upon the divine author of the scriptures, Lord God, the Holy Spirit. That's why he has been given for you to be constantly involved in you. And not only that, if you are a pastor, teacher, or male believer, Lord God, the Holy Spirit has been given that gift, a gift of communication from the head of the department of the church, which is none other but our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, which is a bona fide gift. Not all the education under the sun can qualify you to communicate the word if it were not by the ministerial gift of a pastor, teacher, given for you by the head of the department of the church, because Lord is using that gift to construct his body, to prepare his bride. And if you love sin, you cannot love righteousness of God. That's why the bona fide gift of a pastor teacher will never worry about the softness of this world. And he worries, he worries, why not the people are growing up in the knowledge of Bible doctrine? That's what he will worry. That's what he will look. His duty is to constantly seek the things above and teach for you the things from the Bible doctrine through proper exegesis, isagogics and categorization of the word through the dispensing technique of dispensations. He's been called to lay down his life. He's been called to serve you, not to be served by you. And his life is a temporary sacrifice, dear brethren not to enjoy upon the offerings of poor people, not to enjoy and squeeze them to give more offerings so that I can fulfill the last patterns. He doesn't care for the money because ministry is not and never for the money. Ministry is to inculcate Bible doctrine, that's it. And the bona fide gift of a pastor teacher is to communicate the truth. And Lord God, the Holy Spirit has been given for you so that he permanently indwells in you. When you have been in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, he will teach to you all the truth set for us in John 16, 12 through 15. He will search the scriptures diligently and he will get back to your mind what is the mind of Christ. In the completed canon of scripture, what we are looking around. And among them, what the body is, is Ephesians. What the head is, is Colossians. Why so many people fail to understand the simple truth, dear brother, and do you know? They fail to understand the simple truth because they do not know what is exactly the word of the Lord. What is exactly the burden of Jehovah, the Masa, in the Hebrew, smash down. Many people may not understand when we call Masa, the burden. The burden means when you're standing on the ground floor and from the fifth floor, if around one ton of weight has been put upon you and what happens to you, you smash down. That is what the burden when they speak along in the book of Ephesians, we will be noted. The burden towards this mystery doctrine laid down upon Apostle Paul written for us. And this word Masa could be further exemplified for us as we go through the prophet's writings in the minor as well as major. Whenever the burden, the Masa, the burden, the Masa is being used. 
and there couldn't be any great burden for us then to look upon the burden of Ezekiel, which was being laid down for him to sleep aside for 390 days on the left and 40 days on the right for the sins of Israel for 390 days and for the sins of Judah for 40 days. There could be any greater burden than that that you can realize. And prior to that, you have the food to be caked around such, so, such of a little quantity, the water to drink around such kind of a little quantity. And to cook that food upon what? Upon human excreta. If it were not that Ezekiel told that I have not eaten any torn flesh, the one which dies of itself, I have not cooked anything of it. It wouldn't have been exemplified or it wouldn't have been accepted to give to cook upon cow dung. The Lord's intention was very clear why he has to cook upon the human excreta so that the people can understand the defilement what they have done in the eyes of Jehovah and that was a burden that he has to speak today that burden is not being there upon the shoulders of past teachers and today the burden laden upon the past teachers is how to squeeze money from the poor people how to earn the money by begging, how to be like great beggars by putting their account numbers in the TV channels as well, and tell that you can send me an offering, and that offering is pleasable to God, and God will in return bless you. Do you know what does the Bible teach for us? The workman is eligible to eat from the glad tidings of that work. Are you really working the work of Jehovah if you are a pastor teacher? Are you really working the things pertaining to my Lord? If you really have been given the great work of an evangelist. But the reality is you don't know it. Even to take the life's last turn men will come to join the ministry do you know what for because their income should not be cut off the problem is not with the believers they really fear the lord and anyone who comes in the name of the lord thinking that the passage of revelation where one like forty four thousand jews who have been given who have been sent for the people our Lord said, any one of them who have been clothed, who have been given food, is it as good as given to me. Keeping that passage, they enter into the home. And as they enter into that home, they think that this is one who has come for me to be from God. So they provide him in the fear of the name of the Lord to that person, anything and everything. And that has become a great disadvantage. Even if I have my son... Whether he has the gift of a pastor teacher in the next generation, God decides it. It is not me, no matter what well I train him up to become a pastor, he can be a pastor. But there are some people in this country as if the gift of a pastor teacher is given for them as a sign of authority from their father to this son and to this son to the third generation and from the third generation to the fourth generation it is not for the burden for pastor teacher work because they do not know what is the work of a pastor teacher at all number one but it is a work of rising money with the fear of money they want to make the things working out because they will be losing their money if they stop In fact, even D.L. Moody was a great man who established the Moody College. His son was not a believer in Christ. And you know why? He could have made his son to be perfectly organized to become a pastor. It is his own volition. Even tomorrow, if I have a son, whether he has the bona fide gift of a pastor teacher, we cannot because it will be the divine gift of Lord God the Father in heaven to give through his Son, Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, to prepare his bride beautifully for him as per the word of the Lord that demands. 
sense, not as per we think, as per we understand, uh, as per we can tell, I have been a pastor, I will be a pastor, I will be a teacher. No. We can manipulate the things in this earth, dear brethren. One may be superior in thinking than to the other. One may be clever to do enough business than with the other. But with Christ, it is not your superior thinking or your cleverness or your wisdom that is required, but it is required the foolishness of God. The foolishness of God is what to tell as it is what the word of the Lord tells to you. Not to manipulate, not to interpret, not to go for literal translation, but to tell what exactly the word of the Lord tells from the original languages of the scriptures as it has been recorded. And that takes for you to a preparation of time and a good divine mentor to give you as a gift, as a human mentor, so that he can train you up. Not through the visions and dreams, not taking you, carrying you to the third heaven and telling to you. In my case, it is the late Robert Bunker Thieme. In your case, who it is, Lord knows. The key man who has changed you in your thinking. But what for we are to change our thinking? To the conformity image of Christ, we are here to change our thinking. Not to look upon the XYZ trend patterns of this church age, but rather to look upon and emphasize that great mystery doctrine, Aleke Neketesis. Morality any moron can teach. Christians are called for virtue, virtue in the knowledge of Bible doctrine. And to teach you up in that virtue, it requires the bona fide gift of a master teacher. Dear brethren, the life is very rare. It is very precious in the sight of the Lord. Every day is very rare. If Lord is granting us our breath to breathe today, and if you are alive tomorrow again, we need to be thankful to the Lord to tell, Lord, teach me to the praise of your glory, that each and every breath we take has to be hallelujah, and each and every word and act we perform, it has to be to the praise. And that is what you and I have to learn. That's what our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ has done in the humanity of his flesh. And he wouldn't have done it if he wouldn't have the Bible doctrine as number one priority in his soul. You wouldn't have definitely not done it. At the same time, we the church age believers have been called to do it. For what? To the praise of his glory and his grace, that's what it is. Not for any other XYZ trends. Though we may have the trials suffering through, like the Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego they had, when they failed to bow down to the image of God. Do you know what did they say? If my Lord wills, he will deliver. If not, what? We will be the people to say, we didn't bow to you. So you have the trials and temptations by Satan, you need to be there to tell, my Lord will deliver me, and Lord is not going to test you beyond your temptation, said the Bible doctrine. And later on, what? If Lord is not able to deliver me, but we will be the people who have not fallen to the temptation. And you know what the great thing? Lord will definitely deliver you when you take Bible doctrine, and day by day process, you build up the edification complex of your soul. That is what Bible doctrine will do. That is what Bible doctrine will teach. That is what Bible doctrine will make you to learn. Though the furnace was being heated for seven times, then too, Lord delivered them. Though Satan tries for you to break up your fellowship in learning the word of the Lord in the mental ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, by making seven times more pleasable for you to get entertained into your lust patterns, when you're faithful enough to Lord, Lord will deliver you. Faithfully, if you're not able to look upon the consistency of growing up in the knowledge of Bible doctrine, then where you will grow up? When you will grow up, where you will come? You will not come, dear brethren. You will not grow up, dear brethren. That is of a great pain that we are telling to you again and again, the reality and the importance of Bible doctrine. Anything and everything you can do in this earth, but you cannot grow up in the knowledge of Bible doctrine if it is not by the will of God to grow up. And it is Lord's will that none should perish and everyone should come to the knowledge of truth. First Timothy 4.2 4, 2, or 2, four tells to us. Everyone should come to the knowledge of truth. How can you come to the knowledge of truth if you ignore Bible doctrine? 
how can you come to the knowledge of truth if you don't have a right pastor teacher with the bona fide gift from the head of the department of the church in teaching to you the word of the Lord? And that is what we have taken a course of discussion to tell the importance of dispensations, the importance of polytimo privileges, rather than answering Zakir Nayak. And to whom these videos will go, Lord knows. And to whom this information Lord wants to record and keep, Lord knows. But my duty is to deliver it. You take it, believe it, consider it or not, I don't care. Whether you hear or forbear, I don't care. Because the Bible is very strong for us to tell all the time. To make it to understand. What is great and justified among men is a great abomination among God. And what is great and justifiable among God, on the contrary, we can think it will be an abomination to this man. And the teaching, what we are teaching may be for you a strange thing. But we don't care. Our duty is to teach. And we will not stop till they have the last breath to teach his word faithfully. We shall continue tomorrow with our head bowed and eyes closed. The closing moments being dedicated to those who are here without Christ, without hope, and without eternal life. In order to link to Lord God the Father that to believe upon Christ. That is the moment itself. You shall have this eternal truth. This eternal truth for is for very simple. Believing Christ, you shall be saved. And whereas for the believer, the great man is to grow up in grace and in the knowledge of Bible doctrine, so that you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. And whereas for the pastor teacher, the great man is to carry Sutam Laga and herald the word in season out of season, because of the diamond from my witnesses wherewith you have been called. The great diamond from my witnesses is indwelling Trinity, followed by Bible in our hands, the teach and every word have you thought it or not, and we have the diamond from my witnesses for us to know that it is none other but the witnesses being our hearers. If there are no hearers, dear brethren, do not worry. Besides nature, the entire angelic course will be our hearers. And the number one witnesses will be our Lord, who has been permanently indwelling in us. And when we are in true fellowship with him by the confession of our sins through rebound, he will be a great witness for us, each and every word we spoke it or not. Therefore, dear brethren, Lord has everything planned systematically. It is we, we are neglecting his truth. The greater you neglect his truth, greater will be a life of failure, greater will be a life of negative evolution, greater will be a life of misery, anxiety, and worry. And the cure for worry, the only antidote for worry, is to learn Bible doctrine. And greater you are positive enough to learn the word of the Lord, your stability, your happiness will be great, because you have more confidence in the reality of the word of the Lord, which is nothing but our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, than into the thinking of this world. So which way you want to go, you decide. We shall continue tomorrow. Father, we are grateful for the privilege that thou hast given to fellowship with you through the word. We pray that Lord God, the Holy Spirit, will enlighten us in these things and make it a source of blessing and challenge, sovereign Lord. For we ask it in Christ's name, Father. Amen.